Hello and welcome back. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about turpins. And your goal is to be able to define uh, what secondary compounds are, explain the relationship between cannabis and uh, what's known as essential oils, and describe how turpins impact the emergent properties of cannabis. So another level of complexity. Something to know is that all plants produce, or pretty much all plants produce, what we call secondary compounds. These are molecules that are not required for essential life functions, but through evolution, plants have gotten a hold of a way to make extra metabolites through different chemical pathways. And then essentially these metabolites are beneficial to the plants. So just like cannabinoids, terrapins are another class of secondary compounds. Cannabis and terrapins combine to create synergistic effects. So when you inhale or eat whole cannabis, cannabinoids and terrapins combine to create synergistic effects. So let's talk about the evolution and purpose of them. So terrapins as I just mentioned, are metabolites which benefited plants. And it turns out that mostly terrapins are used for defense against predation. However, they are also used all over the place for many different functions. That would be essentially one benefit of terrapins uh, is defense against predation. So depending on the ecosystem, certain plants basically evolve to produce larger amounts of specific metabolites. Right? If it increased the plant's fitness amongst the population over time, then it's going to be selected for by evolution. So given that there's been many plants in many environments over the years, and that evolution usually adds on to uh, DNA and doesn't necessarily delete it, um, especially kind of for plants um, and for secondary metabolites. So under these premises and assumptions, um, the number of different plant species that there are, it should be a little surprised how diverse terrapin function is because plants have been coexisting with animals for many, many, you know, millions of years. So it should stand to be that there are gonna be shapes amongst the terrapin molecules that interact with animal systems, with animal biological networks. So historically and contextually here for a moment, you know, during our hunter-gatherer days, humans learned how to utilize these compounds for medicinal purposes. You know, essentially people went out and ate things. Uh, they went out and they took plants and they took samples and they would combine them together and um, drink them as teas and boil them and, and put them on wounds and see if, you know, they had any medicinal effects. Today, this practice continues, though somewhat um, a little bit more processed, so to speak, and the category of essential oils uh, is exclusively terrapin based. Okay, so the oils that you buy, you know, lavender oils, citrus oils, turmeric oils, these are all um, essential oils and they're all terrapin. And for those of you guys who may be a little bit skeptical of, you know, the role of holistic medicine or naturopathic medicine, something to note is that most all drugs, most all pharmaceutical drugs are actually secondary compounds. Opioids, aspirin, cocaine, caffeine, the list goes on and on. Antibiotics, well, penicillin. Um, these are all drugs and these are all secondary compounds and they are all pharmaceuticals. Now that does not mean that you should abandon modern medicine, but it does mean that there are are some instances likely and historically to where terrapins can have medical function where we've discovered this and we've kept that information throughout the ages. When you combine cannabinoids and terrapins, especially in the brain, you've got another layer of complexity. And so the possible functional benefits of cannabis are expanded upon. And so this also highlights sensitive dependence on initial conditions and places limits on studies which only use one cannabinoid and those who don't use whole cannabis extract within their studies. 
right? If you are not looking at the complete terrapin profile, you're going to get different mental effects. The user or the consumer will have a different uh, emergent experience based on this. Something important is due to the small volume of terrapins present within inhaled cannabis, you know, it's unlikely that they can affect disease states the same way that essential oils would because you're simply not getting the volume of oils required from inhalation. And if, you, if your goal is to get enough of terrapins, you're going to be inhaling a lot of cannabis or eating a lot of cannabis. And clearly, if you eat it, you know, um, molecules are going to be destroyed and broken down as they go through the digestive process. So um, it might not be the best way. Having these guys being absorbed through the skin, through concentrated form, is a much better method to get them into your bloodstream if your goal is to use terpene-based therapy to um, you know, cure what ails you. I can't stress this enough, though. There is enough terpenes to influence the emergent properties of inhaled cannabis. So your mental state has much to do with the terpen profile. So terpen profiles of cannabis show tremendous variation among the different strands of cannabis. In fact, the differences in odor among strands is almost completely dependent on the ratio of and amounts of terpenes. Sadly, the research on combinations of cannabinoids and terpenes is almost completely lacking. Dosage of terpenes from inhalation is unlikely to cause effects other than the mental aspects. So I've chosen a few terpenes to highlight. B. Mycerin. So it's a large component of many of the indica strains. And so this is a muscle relaxer and a bit of a sedative, uh, which is commonly attributed with the effects from using indica varieties. A terpenoline is found somewhat higher in sativa strands. Trace amounts are seen in indica and mostly indica hybrids. And they're found in many of the essential oils, citrus, mentha, juniperus, and it has an antifungal function. Limonone. If you ever wanted to know what the shape of orange smell is, look no further. This terpene has been shown to slow down tumor growth uh, in certain models. It has been shown to help in weight loss and help fight the inflammation associated with bronchitis. And it is often used in medical ointment. Linolol is found in mint and cinnamon. It has anti-inflammatory properties and has been shown to be somewhat beneficial for certain cases of liver cancer. Up next, we have alpha and beta pinene. And so these molecules are responsible for the pine smell. Alpha and beta pinene have been shown to have some anti-inflammatory properties in chondocytes.